The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. I love blueberries. I don't know about you, but I feel really fortunate, really happy, that we can have them all year long. When you go into the supermarket in town, and the sliding doors open before you as you enter, almost right in front of you there, all the fresh fruits and vegetables, but my eye goes to the blueberries. Are they right in the same spot or did they move them a little bit maybe? What do they look like? Are there a few in the little skinny containers? Or do they have that abundance of the really big containers of blueberries? Are they the small ones or are they the really large ones this week? I can't wait to see them because I know I'm going to be having them pretty much every day with my cereal or my oatmeal for breakfast. And even just going into the store and getting ready to buy them, I can almost begin to taste them. Look at the color of the blueberry, such a rich, deep color. Look at the plumpness, the juiciness. You can picture it, you can almost taste it already. And as I said, it's amazing, really, that we can have blueberries all year long. Do, do you look at the package when you pick it up? It's almost like a little game, isn't it? Where are they from now? Chile? Argentina? Michigan? Canada? My goodness, sometimes even from New Jersey. But they're always good. And they are always available. At least they're always available for us in Allendale, right here at the local supermarket. You know, when I walk in and I'm looking at what I'm going to buy, I'm not only looking forward to and grateful for those fresh, juicy, tasty blueberries, I'm always amazed at how much of everything there is so many choices and in such abundance. And I know as I begin my shopping with the blueberries and begin to think of everything else I'm going to put into my cart, I know that for me, Father Charlie living in Allendale, there is no chance that I need to worry 
about going hungry, there is no chance that I need to worry if I'm going to find what I need for good nutrition. No worry whatsoever. In fact, I might even say I feel kind of blessed about it. I'm blessed to have fresh blueberries all year long. But then I read, listen, or pray with the Beatitudes of the Gospel tonight. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who are merciful, who are clean of heart, who are peacemakers, who are persecuted and insulted because of Jesus. And then I'm not so sure that I'm blessed. Blueberries seem a little trivial in the light of the Beatitudes, don't they? Jesus Christ, in speaking to those who he's called to himself on that mountain where he's teaching them, as he calls them to himself, he speaks to them God's blessings. And he speaks to them God's blessings in a way that 2,000 years ago, and let's face it, I think today, kind of turn upside down the way people are used to thinking about feeling or being blessed. I think maybe those words come across our mouths a little too easily or even a little too tritely at times. I know they do for me. Sometimes perhaps we speak of being blessed in a way that's really about passing things or things of of comfort or convenience or luck. I keep remembering those blueberries and how tasty they are and how happy I am to have them and how I know any day I can walk or drive right over and pick them up. But I know that's not really a blessing. I know that the attitudes which we hear today but, but really are familiar to us, we're really being reminded of them, not hearing them anew. I know that these Beatitudes are saying to me that God's blessing is announced to those who are hurting. God's blessing is announced to those who are struggling. God's blessing is announced to those who are suffering and most especially to those for whom this is not a momentary affliction, but really a way of life. To those who live in situations, for the most part, that we will not encounter, or if we encounter, that we will not find our daily life. As I listen to these beatitudes that Jesus proclaims, these blessings I can't help but think that as he's turning upside down the way people look at blessings, that I'm being turned upside down a little bit too. A word that's become more spoken in recent years is the word privilege. And maybe privilege now has become a cliche even. People will cynically maybe or angrily tell people to check their privilege as if it were something we could set aside. But we know that if we're living in this area, we do enjoy many privileges, don't we? And so when I hear Jesus speaking to his disciples, these beatitudes, these blessings, I think he's speaking to them on a bridge. They are going to experience this persecution of which he's speaking, They're going to experience hardship. But he wants them to be aware, I believe, that it's not only their hardship. He's trying, I believe, to shake them up, wake them up a little bit more, to know that they are called to be among those for whom these hardships are ways of life. And so maybe for we who are privileged in many ways, you and I, maybe these Beatitudes are meant to shake us up a little bit more, 
to recognize the privileges that we have so that we can be vigilant and not take them for granted in our own lives, but also to recognize that like the disciples that Jesus called close to himself on that mountain, the gospel being proclaimed is meant to call us close to the Lord also, that we know that we're meant to be with and among those who are not privileged, that we're meant to live in unity with all those who live in hardship and suffering and struggle. Jesus turned the blessings upside down 2,000 years ago, but we know we still have to be among those who are turning them upside down today. We know that our culture continues to proclaim, I would say continues to shout blessings that are not found here. Our culture proclaims blessed are the powerful or, or blessed are the wealthy, and that's not found in the gospel, is it? We have to constantly remind ourselves, all of that is passing. All of that is passing. And we're called to walk in the footsteps of Christ, who made himself neighbor to the oppressed and lived amongst those who suffered. A few minutes ago, we were in a good way, I would say, privileged to pray with and for Ali, our candidate for full communion in the Catholic Church. Ali has been drawn to the beautiful faith that we share, not here, but just, but even the, not only here, but the church throughout the world. And being drawn to that, she's already been gathering with some of our parishioners to break open God's word, to walk with Jesus as she already has, but to begin to walk with Jesus with us in the Catholic Church. I don't know about you, but that ritual that we experienced of Ali being marked with the cross, being marked all over herself, her person with the cross, I always find it so moving because I rejoice with the candidate, with Ali. I rejoice with her to see what God's doing in her life. But I also rejoice to know that when we experience that ritual, that we are blessed too if we let those words and that blessing and that ritual shake us up and maybe turn us upside down a little bit too. Do our ears hear? Do our eyes see? Do our lips proclaim? Does our heart house the Lord? Do our shoulders, our hands, and our feet do God's work? Those blueberries are awfully good, aren't they? But the blueberries won't sustain me or you. They're tasty. They're beautiful to behold. They are created by God, but they're passing. The happiness of blueberries with my morning breakfast might last a little while, maybe through the day, I suppose, but it's a passing happiness. We're created for something more. We're created to be blessed by God, to find our happiness in God, to find unity with God. And so blessed are you, blessed am I, when that sinks in deeply. Blessed are you, blessed are we, when that awareness helps us free ourselves from false idols or passing trends. Blessed are we when that reality draws us to use all that God gives us to lift up those who are downtrodden and overlooked in our world and help them know that they are the ones especially that our Lord looks on tenderly that they and we are all created to live in God's blessings in unity together. <laughs>